Hello. My question is, as a nation, we pride ourselves on freedom of speech and democracy, yet voting Liberal has resulted in so much shame from the typical left. I voted Liberal because Labor Party policies were going to completely threaten my financial position and that of my family. Not because I loved Liberal policies, but because I hated Labor's. Yet, in order to do so, I was made to feel as though I'd turned my back on the environment and humanity as a whole. So my question is, why is politics so full of anger and shaming these days? Uh, thank you, Brittany. We might come back to you in a minute. Um, OK, Rachel, what do you think? Um, do you feel that uh, young people who voted Liberal have been shamed um, in sections of the media, uh, on social media in particular? Uh, well, firstly, thank you, Tony. We pride ourselves on a really robust democracy, but we also pride ourselves that our political debate should be civil and respectful. And so I'm sorry that the, quest the questioner does feel that they're being, um, they're being disrespected by some members of the community. And I, I imagine a lot of that's going on on the internet. We know the internet is not real life, um, that people are generally more, um, I hope, more respectful in day-to-day um, -day life. I've got some experience with that. But anyway, um, I think one of the, the reasons why our questioner might feel some anger directed towards her is because over the what we're facing for the next three years is going to be complete inaction on climate change, is going to be an extension of more tax breaks for millionaires, is going to be more of the African gangs used as scapegoats. And so you can understand why this makes people quite angry. You can understand why people get quite emotional around these issues because they were so hoping for progress. They were so hoping to shift some of that negative and they were so hoping to make progress on the big ideas. It is a, a big letdown, okay. you know, on that. And I'm gonna, while I'm the gonna, questioner... I'm going to I'm going to hold you up there because you're just, just reaching the minute. Okay, is not, the questioner is not... The questioner is not the enemy, you know, okay. that's Well, that's let's, so let's go back. Let's go back to Brittany if we can, if she's still there. Are you still there, Brittany? I am. Yeah, so um, <laughs> can, you, can you point out where it is that you were or felt shamed? Was that on social media? Was it on the internet? Oh, it was, it yeah, television? it was often on social media. Yeah, yeah, it was often on social media, but it, it's not uh, confined to social media at all. Um, I have quite a few, I have a few friends who are quite open about, you know, wanting to discuss it and not so much discuss it, to yell it at me, really. <laughs> and I found I've had, yeah, I found I've had a lot of um, interactions with people um, who have found the need to yell their views at me because of the belief that climate change, there will be an action on climate change and there will be okay. all these All right, let's, let's, let's go around our non-yelly panel and we'll start with <laughs> Tim. What do you think? I mean, that's a very interesting perspective and uh, clearly not every young person has decided that, uh, you know, a change of government was the way. Many obviously voted for the coalition. Well, I feel sorry for Brittany. I mean, democracy is about choice and people have a right uh, to be able to express their view at the ballot box about what they want for their country, for themselves, for their family, for their community. Uh, but the reality is there are some people who are just bullies. Uh, and when they don't tolerate people having different frameworks of thinking or different priorities. Uh, and you see a lot of that in social media, uh, particularly from extreme voices on the left uh, who do bully people. Now, there are extreme voices on the far right too. I'm not trying to pretend otherwise. Uh, but who don't tolerate a diversity of opinion. Uh, and that's where it comes from. But it also comes from dishonesty, where people repeat things like, oh, there will be no action on climate change, even though we're meeting our Kyoto targets, smashing them, in fact. We'll be meeting our Paris targets and we have a comprehensive plan to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions uh, as part of this government uh, and we'll continue to implement them, like the Snowy 2.0 project, uh, like re uh, record investment in renewables. So when people put out misinformation or deceive the public, uh, then obviously it's going to prompt people to become angry about... Uh, the, consequ the choices when they're misled about the consequences. We might come back to the misinformation issue sure. a bit later. Uh, Marcia, what do you think? Um, uh, you actually put aside partisan politics um, to a large degree when you um, thought it was a very important thing to um, align yourselves with mining companies who were offering jobs to Indigenous people and that wasn't exactly a smooth road for you. And, and I um, suffered years of abuse for it. <coughs> um, and, you know, defam defamation, if, you know, of course I didn't have the money to take a defamation case against uh, a journalist at Crikey and a few others. I was uh, 
pilloried on, or on social media. My research work was lied about. Um, and, you know, it just went on for years. Give you and some sympathy for young... I have uh, a lot of sympathy. Like I have a lot of sympathy for Brittany. I think there is an incivility in our politics, an increasing incivility. And uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty stupid position to take. So, yeah, sure, I feel like swearing at people and, you know, um, getting angry about some issues. But in... Uh, Debating with others some very important issues, uh, it's, it's important, I think, to be rational and to um, debate uh, others um, in order to be persuasive and reach a better outcome. So I'm terribly disappointed um, that we won't have um, Bill Shorten's promise of a referendum in this term of government. I'm terribly disappointed that we won't have an end to the community development project that was promised by um, Bill Shorten and, and Patrick Dodson. I, I'm very disappointed about a number of things. But here's the thing. I've, I can't even remember how many governments I've lived through now. <laughs> but if... When you're dealing with uh, the crisis that the uh, Indigenous world faces, you have to just bite your lip and, and try to be partisan in between the elections and work with each government to improve the situation. So a lot of young people are terrifi terrified about climate change and, yes, they have good reason uh, to be afraid. However, what they really need to do now is put the pressure on the right people not on Brittany um, and not on other people who voted um, in a way that makes them unhappy. Um, I can't go and abuse people for voting um, for the Liberal Party because now the Indigenous world will be trapped in the community development project. We probably won't get our referendum on, on the Uluru you know, Statement. We're going we're to so, come, come back and talk specifically about that.